Welcome to another 90 second website builder video tutorial. My name is Greg Hughes and in this video I want to talk to you about using text. Probably the most important and most common tool that you'll use when you design a website with 90 second website builder is the text tool. Now there's a couple of ways to grab the text tool. Obviously you can go to the toolbox and grab it this way or you can go up to the insert menu and use the text tool here and get it. Um, what I want to point out, first of all, don't confuse the text tool with another similar tool called the text area tool down here. The text area tool is part of the form tools and it's a very specific kind of text tool. We're going to be talking about the standard text tool in this video and show you how to work with just that. So let's grab some text by using the text tool like this. We're just going to draw a box on the canvas. And when we do and let go, it gives us some starting text. Also some instructions on how to edit text at the same time. Now there are three stages of modes for the text object. Right now we have one text object here and it is selected so that we can do things with it, like move it around. Because in this state, it is just that an object that can be dragged and dropped into different places. Now, if it's deselected, that's another mode. It's just not something we're not working with. So notice the difference between a selected text object and a deselected text object. Selected has the little handlebars around it. But there's a third stage for a text object that's unique to text when compared to other objects that you'll be working with. And that is the edit mode. To enter the edit mode of the text object, you double click on it. And now we can actually edit the text. So to edit text, we're going to drag our mouse over this and we can either copy and paste or we can literally type text. And you can do all the things with this text that you would normally do with text, such as change its font, style, size, color, and all those good things. What I want to point out to you is you'll notice that the top of my screen, the menus changed as the mode changed when I was working with this text object. So for example, let's get back out to where the text is no longer selected. You'll notice that my menu has changed. And when I select the text, the software knows that I'm working with a text object and presents me with the text tools menu so that I can format it or review it and reach these tools. Editing the text expands that literally to the format section of the text tools. This is what I'm going to be doing in editing text. I'm going to be working with these tools. The basic features are things you'll probably recognize that you can do with text from cut, copy, and paste to changing the font style and size like we mentioned here. Also, we can justify either right, left, center, full justification, and set paragraphs, etc. These are all pretty basic text editing modes that you would imagine. You can also add special symbols with the text tools, and that is a list of funny characters like copyright signs and registered trademarks and those sort of things very easily by using this particular tool. You can also do a find and replace, which is really handy when you're working with a lot of text. If there's a word you want to change uh, in a paragraph or several paragraphs, you could use the find replace mode to do that. The lorem ipsum is just a way of creating some sort of dummy text. Sometimes when you're doing a layout in your website, you want to just have some text to fill the space and then you will edit it down later. I use this a lot when I'm doing layout and I want to kind of see what the text is going to look, that, look like without actually writing the text. I'll show you what I mean. Since I've selected this text, I'm going to replace it with some lorem ipsum. And I'll just say I want one paragraph of that. And you'll see what it did is it gave me some dummy text to work with, which is kind of nice when you're doing some layout and uh, want to see how the page is going to fill. Okay, so that's kind of the basics of how you create a text object and how you edit it. Now, let me say a couple of things about fonts before we move on. As you probably know, you can double click on here and select text and just format that particular word or letter or sentence or whatever you want by going up here to the formatting tools. Now, when you first click on this, you may be surprised to see that not all of your great fonts that are on your Windows system are showing up. A lot of people say, hey, where are all my fonts? Well, 90 Second Website Builder, of course, picks up the fonts that you have in your system, just like with any Windows software. And so your list of fonts may look slightly different than mine. But what you'll notice is the only fonts that are showing are the ones in your system that are considered web safe or web friendly fonts. Now, when you're designing websites, it's a good idea to use web safe fonts as much as possible because these are the fonts that are universal to all other systems and browsers. So if you put Arial on your website, almost every computer in the world has access to Arial and so the font's going to show just fine. And that's true for most of these as well. See, these are all web safe fonts. 
if you were to use some crazy font that your end user doesn't have, it won't look right on the website when they go to it with their computer. And that's why WebSafe fonts exist. Now, there is a way around this. If you want to use other kinds of fonts, it's possible to do that. And there's a system called the Google Font System, which 90 Second Website Builder will allow you to do. But it's a little more advanced, and we'll save that for a different video. But for the most of us, we're going to normally use web safe fonts probably 95% of the time. So don't be surprised if you see a shorter list than you're used to. If you really want to see the rest of your fonts, you could click on this and see those. But I don't do that because I like my website's text to be universal. So now that you know some of the basics of working with text and text objects, let me show you a few examples of how I'm using text in the design of my websites. When you come to this page, the most glaring and obvious use of text are my big bold text objects right here. As you can see, I'm using a really large font because you're able to do that in 90 Second Website Builder. If I double click on this to go inside the edit mode of this text object and select the text, you can see up here in the tools that I'm using a Tahoma 48 bold with a white font. And I've done that because white obviously is going to show up better on this dark background. This text is sitting in a layer that has a very dark background image. And so obviously it looks better in white. So you can do that. One of the things you may notice is also this text I have separated from this text object. I've got three different text objects. I don't have to do that. I find that it's a good idea to keep your text objects separate whenever possible and when it's practical because your website's going to be seen in many different browsers. And sometimes when you have long text, like long paragraphs or long pages of text, you run the risk of certain browsers not being able to make that text look exactly the way you want it. Sometimes it'll shift a little bit. So sometimes people say, hey, I put text on my website. It looks a little bit different in a browser. And that's because sometimes browsers will do that with text that's too long. So when it's possible, when it's practical, you want to keep these separate objects. But you can experiment with that. It doesn't always have to happen that way. So as you can see, most of the things you're seeing on here are text objects. That's what these are. Here's some more of them, different colors. But again, just text objects. And they're all separate. Again, this is a separate text object. Here's a great example of separate text objects. I could have made these two columns actually all one text object with two columns or just made it two text objects. In fact, I made them all different. So every one of these is its own text object. Again, that's my preference because I think it parses better on most web browsers. So I keep these straight because I use, sometimes I use these ruler guides right here. You may be able to see that blue line. Also, I keep them straight by multiple selecting them and then going up to my arrange menu and making sure that all of the edges are aligned left, which I can do up here. So enough about that. Let's talk about this other aspect of the advantage of using this text object in 90 Second Website Builder. I'm going to move the camera over here so you can see something. In this particular layer, I have a big piece of white text. Now this happens to be all one object. So as you can see, we don't have to break everything up. And in this case, it works just fine. But you'll notice that uh, it's not really square. What I want to do is kind of line this up better. And I even have a blue uh, line over here. That's my ruler guide. And you can see I like to line up all of the edges of my ob other objects with that blue line. So all of the uh, right edges are pretty much in the same vicinity, except for this text object, they're not. So it would have been better for me to maybe move this up here and then grab this edge of the text object and just squeeze it in so that it lines up on that blue line. And voila, it's done. Maybe I might even want to kind of bring this down and center it vertically so that looks a little better. I'm doing that just to show you that you can expand and stretch these things, you know, within reason. Now, notice that if I narrow it like this, if I go too far, I have a little bit of a problem. This black or this dark gray area is actually a layer. And I want to make sure I keep my text object inside this layer. And by doing this, I've extended it beyond the layer and is now no longer a member of this layer. And I want it to stay there. So I would be careful to make sure that as I do this, I keep this inside the layer property. And that's what I've done here. So in this case, I'll want it to go out to about here to stay looking nice with the rest of my website. That's just an example. So anyway, those are some of the basics. Again, we can adjust the font and the size and the color and all that, obviously. But let me show you a couple of other things. I'm going to go to another page here. And again, here's an example of some text that I squeezed because it fit better in between, especially right here. This isn't actually part of a layer. 
but I'm using this in between some photos and I don't have to be stuck with, you know, a squarish looking text object. I can squeeze it down to fit in between these just right. You'll also notice that this is a straight edge. That's because I've justified this text. Let me select it so you can see. I've justified this text on the right. That's what this is. That is right justification. And I just thought it would look better being up against this image. So you have that option. Now, let me show you a couple of things here. What's unique about the text object, like I said before, is it actually has three states. So when it's unselected, it looks like this. It means we're working with something else that's not selected. Clicking on it once means we have selected the text object. That's different than working with the contents of the text object, which is the text itself. So by clicking once, what I can do is I can change the attributes of this object. If I wanted to change the contents or the text itself, once again, I would double click and go in and be in that mode. That's a different state. Here, I can work with the fonts and the colors and all the things we just talked about. But what about working with the text object itself because it has its own attributes? One of those is its size. We were working with the text object when we were doing this. We weren't working with the font or the text itself. And so there are many, many other things you can do with the text object, which we haven't covered. So let's talk a little bit about some of those things. In fact, it's so vast. Again, we won't be able to do this all in one video, but let's talk about some of the more common ones. To get to the text object properties, we can't double click like we can on an image because when we double click on a text object, we go into edit mode. Instead, what we can do is we can select it, right click on it, and go to the object properties. Let me move this up or move this camera down because the menu goes way off the screen here. So what I'm doing is I'm right clicking on this object and it's still off camera, but down way down at the bottom of this menu, there's something that says, object properties and I'm selecting object properties and that brings up this object properties box and there are actually a number of settings I can change for this text object. One of them is I can actually turn this piece of text into an image. Now why would I want to do that? Well you would rarely want to do that but you can. One of the reasons for doing that is if you absolutely wanted to use a font that you didn't want to use at font face or Google fonts or use a web safe font, you wanted to use a font within your computer system that's just unusual. What you can do is design the text with that font and then publish this object as an image instead of as a text object. And you can even decide if it's going to be a GIF, JPEG, a PNG. The advantage is you now have an image and it can look like anything you want and the font won't matter. The disadvantage is this is now no longer text content and that's a difference for search engine optimization purposes. So from Google's perspective, they look at images differently than they look at text. It's not that one's better than the other, but they're different and you should know that. For example, images load slower than text. So you want to be careful with this feature. You wouldn't want to turn all of your text into images because Google would think you don't have any text on your website and that's not good. So you use this with moderation and you use this carefully. There are a lot of other features that we will cover in other videos because they have to do with other things like working with responsive text. We'll talk about that when we talk about responsive websites. And some of these things are actually pretty advanced. But let's look at a couple of things you may find handy right away. One of the things you can do with your text, and again, we're working with this text object up here, is I can actually turn this into columns. Watch what happens if I make this a two column text object. We'll keep the gap at five. Click OK. And now look, I actually have text that's automatically broken into two columns. Very simple thing to do. And as you can imagine, that would be a very handy tool. Again, I'm going to right click, go all the way down to the bottom and choose Object Properties to bring this up. Let me change this back to 1 because that's what I want. Also, the text object, again, this is not the font or the text itself, but the box or the object itself can have its own configuration or just like a page or a layer does. That means it can have a background. Right now, and by default, a text object always has a transparent background. That's why when you move it over on top of something, you can see through it. But it doesn't have to be that way. So if we go back to the object properties, style, and the background, we can make this a solid color if we wanted to. And let me make it something other than white so that it shows. In fact, we'll make it uh, a light blue just so you can see the difference. The text object will have that background. We can also control everything else about it that you would imagine, the borders and the padding and all that. So let's go back inside. Style tab takes us to these settings. 
We can create a border. That border can be solid. It can be dotted or dashed. There are so many different possibilities you could imagine. We can even make a radius. That means a rounded edge if we have a border. So right now we have zero border. So let's put a border of say four pixels so we can see it. And let's make it have a radius of say five. So it's kind of rounded. And let's make the border be dashed. Watch what happens. So now we have a text object that has all of those attributes. So again, imagine the possibilities. So you can make just about anything you want to. What I'm going to do is go back to the Style tab and undo this stuff. You can see what you can do by playing with these. It doesn't have to be solid. It can be an image. It can be gradients, textures, patterns, just like anything else that you would change. Also, what you can do, and I'm going to set these back to what they were. I want no border. Also, what you can do is you can give this box a shadow. So you can offset it by so many pixels in both directions. You can decide how blurry you want it to be, what color you want that shadow to be. And since I removed all those other attributes, we'll end up with just a transparent box with a little bit of a shadow. But we can make that shadow blurry if we wanted to. Right click, Object Properties, Style, Shadow, and we can make this blurry. And we can make it bigger too. And you can see what happens. And of course, text objects can have other attributes. It could be used in animation. If we didn't want it to hug the edge so much, we could change these numbers and make it be a little bit wider around the edges. I'm just picking five at random. You can pick whatever you want, and you can see it sort of affects it that way. So anyway, that gives you some starting point and an idea of some of the things you can do with the text object. And again, the text object is one of the more important tools you'll use with 90 Second Website Builder. Most websites are made up of text and images. So it's a tool you really want to get to know and use and have fun with as you're building websites in 90 Second Website Builder.